Hi again, Patricia. $77 billion, a lot of money. What's it all about? It is a lot of money. And look, the reason it's even a thing is the Australia Institute, back at the beginning of the campaign, in fact, I think I interviewed Simon Birmingham when the figure was just breaking, uh, basically modelled the impact of the government's tax cuts and they said $77 billion was the, the kind of share that would go to higher income earners in tax cuts, people over, over $180,000. So that's what they said in their modelling. Now, since, people have been asking, reasonably, I think, of the government, is that the figure? Uh, the government says that the Australia Institute is left-leaning and, you know, raises questions around the Australia Institute and their figures. In fact, it was Bill Shorten that held up a piece of paper in the Sky News debate on Friday night, the, the People's Forum, as it's known, with, with this figure, $77 billion, and the Prime Minister said, I don't trust your maths bill, and it became one of those moments of that debate. Now, today, the Treasurer has been asked many times, and he was just then on the news channel by me as well, whether it is $77 billion, and he's been refusing or just not wanting to answer the question. And the reason he cites is that uh, essentially that, you know, you've got to look at the whole tax plan that actually uh, higher income earners pay a lot more of tax full stop, which, which is actually accurate. Of course they do because they're on very high incomes. They, they pay a lot more in tax than somebody who's sort of a, a teacher or a nurse. There's no doubt about it. And that's the government's counter argument. But it has now become a bit of a thing. Now, Josh Frydenberg says it, it's, it's a Labor gotcha question. That, that that's, you know, that la it's a Labor question. Yes, the Labor Party wants to know the answer, but that's like saying, I suppose, on the other side of politics, that when we push Labor on how much their, their climate abatement policies might cost, that that's a coalition question. I think it's just a voter question, to be honest. It's a reasonable question. I will ask that of Labor people when we have them on as well. I think it's a reasonable question to ask about costs and, and figures, and, and it's part of the debate we're having. Now, the people responsible for this $77 billion figure, which, as I say, has become a thing, are the Australia Institute. And Ben Oakhurst is the director of the Australia Institute. He joins me now. Ben Oakhurst, welcome. Thanks for having me on, Patricia. Ah, this figure. So your $77 billion figure for higher mm. income earners has been really at the centre of the political debate today, particularly between the treasurers. Uh, the treasurer has said it's wrong. H how did you come up with it? What is the basis of this figure? Well... Let's go back one step, which is the government claimed, and I think rightly, that it was delivering $230 billion of extra tax cuts over the 10 years. They, they put that figure out there to compare and contrast their tax plan with Labor's. Now, um, I don't think you can argue with the fact that the government is offering more tax cuts. Um, they're, they're, they're pleased with that. Um, and at the middle and bottom ranges, the tax cuts, are, the tax packages of both sides are fairly similar. Uh, Labor's offering a little bit more, just a little bit more at the bottom end. And the middle section is roughly about the same. But it's the longer term tax cuts that uh, are quite expensive and offer a lot more in our estimation. So we sought to look at the government's own figure of that $230 billion and work out approximately how much of that money went to those over $180,000 uh, per year. And we've taken a conservative estimate of uh, $77 billion. We've been very careful to say that it's at least a $77 billion. Uh, we can't put it to the exact decimal point. But we know that it's at least $77 billion. And we think it's an important figure because it is a choice. You can spend it on tax cuts or you can spend it on something else. Now, the government can argue that, that tax cuts can deliver more growth if it wants to. I, I think the money would deliver more growth if it was spent on health and education. Most economists would agree. But I don't think you can argue that uh, $77 billion at least won't go to those earning more than $180,000 a year. It's just, it's just a fact. Um, I don't know why we can't agree on that and move on. OK, because it's about context, I suppose. Mm. So the government won't confirm it, but they argue, and, and Josh Frydenberg made this argument. He did explain his rationale, and he argued that higher-income people pay significantly more in tax. So if you look at it as a crude number, $77 billion, you know, it looks large and scary, which is why it's been used in the political debate. But in reality, if you look at the spread, it's because higher income people are earning so much to start with. That's true, isn't it? That's right. You've put your finger on it. I mean, that's why we have a progressive income tax system, is that higher income people are earning so much. So the idea of a progressive income tax system is not just that they pay more, but they pay a bigger proportion of their uh, income in income tax. 
And I, I think focusing on the 77 billion is good, but it's actually it misses a larger debate that we need. I think we should be having, which is about the progressive nature of the income tax system. And the government has rightly said what they're doing is removing a, a tax bracket, and they're saying that makes it flatter and fairer. I think it's true it makes it flatter. It, it, critically, it doesn't make the tax system flat. We're not having a flat income tax system, but the government is making it flatter. By its own admission, it's removing an income tax bracket and it's lifting that $180,000 threshold to $200,000. Now, making a system flatter uh, makes it less progressive and, in my estimation, uh, less fair. And it's important to put okay. it in... I but think let me pick you up on this. Mm. It is still progressive, though, because this yep. is what Josh Frydenberg argues, that it's unfair to say it's not progressive. It's still a progressive tax system. That's right. It is still a progressive pro tax system. It's just not as progressive. Here's a little bit of context for you. The top tax threshold uh, used to kick in at $60,000 a year under John Howard. Um, back in 2004, 13% of the population were in the top tax bracket. It's somewhere between 3 and 5% now. So w we have um, uh, increased that threshold for the top marginal tax rate uh, steadily across uh, the last uh, 10 or 20 years. And I think that's overall made it uh, less progressive. And I think by the government's own admission, this move does make it uh, a flatter. And uh, whichever way you uh, cut it, that means um, uh, inequality will get worse. And, and it's worth looking at inequality because this is this is what's driven this debate to the to the to political level, I think. And in Australia, the bottom four percent, the the bottom twenty percent of um, households, some four million people, have about as much wealth in Australia as the ten richest families. Even if you look on income, that's on wealth. Even if you look on income over the long term. The top 1% has probably doubled their uh, income share in Australia over the, uh, the last uh, 20 uh, or 30, 35 years. And flattening the income tax system, you're right, it doesn't make it flat, um, will mean uh, that it's less progressive. The, the government, one more figure. The government put out, Matthias Cormann put out his own figures about the share that the top 20% of taxpayers will pay. Even the government found um, that was going to reduce by about 1.1% percentage points. We think it's probably bigger. It sure. depends how you cut it. But, but their whole agenda has been about reducing taxes. I mean, that would that would be, if they were here, the counter-argument that they'd put to you, yes, because they're about reducing taxes. That's actually at the heart of their economic agenda. Exactly. Uh, and it is. And I think it's worth what There's two debates to be had there. Is it better to spend the money on health or education infrastructure? Do you get better uh, bang for your buck for the economy, driving productivity and spending and low-income earners are more likely to spend it and could be good for the economy overall. And as the OECD and the IMF have said, uh, inequality is actually harming um, uh, growth uh, nowadays. So there's how you spend the money and, and, and what that does for your economy. And then there's whether um, it's fair or the progressive nature. And we are making our tax structure flatter. Okay. We are going to take a $77 billion less from those over earning $180,000. So I think we should agree on the facts and then have the debate. All right. OK. So just on your motivation, the government has made the point that you're a left-leaning think tank. They're right, mm. aren't they? I mean, you've worked for the Greens, you worked for Bob Brown. You are a left-leaning think tank. Uh, the Australian Institute's a progressive think tank, um, but we're fiercely non-partisan. We barrack for ideas, uh, not for political parties. We, we, we supported the government in its um, bank levy. We supported the government in reintroducing fuel indexation when uh, the Greens were opposing it and the Labor Party was uh, opposing it. Um, we work to improve uh, direct action. Um, that was something that was passed with Clive Palmer in the Senate. We've been accused of being too close to Clive Palmer in the past and uh, uh, cops, cops some flack for it. But we thought it was better that the government's direct action plan uh, was improved. So we've got, a, uh, we've got broad shoulders. We don't, we don't seek praise and we're high profile. Um, we're engaged in the policy debate um, and we cop uh, criticism. But we cop it from all sides. And, uh, uh, the government wasn't complaining when we were supporting their direct action legislation or reintroducing fuel indexation. And I think criticising board members or, uh, or, or personnel is, uh, is, not, is not useful. And I think the, for the government in a political election campaign to be accusing us of being political when we're just talking to, uh, uh, about uh, facts 
Um, I don't think it's good for the, the public policy debate. Let's debate the, the, the issues, agree on the facts um, and uh, the, let the government own those tax cut uh, changes that they're uh, supporting and let's have a debate about the progressive income tax system, what's good for the economy okay. and what's not. You mentioned Clive Palmer and that you've been criticised for being you know, close in the past or doing work with Clive Palmer. What kind of senator do you think he will be? Because... Uh, Labor is running the line that, you know, he'll have a secret agenda for business tax cuts. All of this, well, essentially a scare campaign. Do you think that's unfair? Well, I, I do think there's a lot of questions to ask about um, the amount of money that's being put into uh, the uh, election campaign and what that... Uh, uh, might deliver in terms of the way of votes and it's an awful lot to be uh, spending. My, to be honest though, my experience with Clive Palmer in the past was that um, while he uh, uh, voted to get rid of the carbon uh, tax and I think that was a terrible decision, he did make the right decision on the renewable energy target, the clean energy finance uh, corporation, ARENA, the climate change authority, all institutions that the government uh, supports uh, uh, these days as, as critical to its armoury in the climate uh, change debate. Uh, I don't know what Clive Palmer will be like in the future. OK, so you're saying that on climate change, I remember he hung out with Al Gore, didn't he? Or was that, is that just a dream I had or is, that my, is my memory right? No, he did. Um, having said that, he's going to this election um, promoting uh, uh, nuclear power and he's uh, certainly not supporting... Uh, uh, climate change action uh, in this parliament. So going on his record of what he's promoting to do in the next parliament, it doesn't look like uh, anything that he promoted uh, or supported in the past. But I think it does point to uh, the fact that uh, the Senate crossbench is going to be interesting whoever wins the election. A lot of focus has been on Labor and what will happen in the Senate with its program. Equally, though, it's true that uh, the, the coalition faces a probably more difficult prospect in the Senate and the Australia Institute's analysis and research shows that they might need every single non-Labor and Green crossbencher to secure a majority of 39 in the Senate. That could include Clive Palmer. I think it's a long shot still for him to win a, a Senate seat. It's possible. But Pauline Hanson will still be there. Uh, Jackie Lambie's uh, a chance. Uh, One Nation's a chance in uh, South Australia. There'll still be Centre Alliance there. There'll still be Cory Bernardi there. And that, that, that gaggle of crossbenchers is likely to be needed, all of them, if the coalition to be returned. So I think they potentially face the real nightmare Senate uh, more than uh, the Labor Party would do if it, if it won uh, government. Just a quick question. Is there more modelling coming from the Australia Institute in the last two weeks of the political campaign? Because this $77 billion figure has been quite potent in the political debate. Is there more of that? Well, interestingly, um, we calculated how much of the company tax cuts would go to the banks in the last election campaign. And the government was very critical of us at the time uh, then as well, but they never disputed the figure and I, I note again they haven't disputed the figure. We do have some important uh, work uh, coming out for the rest of the election campaign, particularly in the climate and energy space as well as the tax space, looking at whether these uh, uh, modelling claims uh, associated uh, uh, with the Brian Fisher modelling uh, really stack up in the context of other, other modelling. So we'll have that out shortly. And do you think it's possible to put a number on Labor's policy? They're saying you can't model it, but it, it is possible as long as you are transparent about your, your assumptions, isn't it? Oh, it, it's very difficult to do uh, economy-wide uh, modelling uh, like that. It really depends upon the assumptions. It's much more easy uh, and in, indeed undisputable that you can work out how much of the income tax cuts goes to those over $180,000, and as we know, it's at least $77 billion. But that economy-wide uh, modelling rests on all sorts of assumptions, and I actually think we need a bigger debate about uh, economic modelling, and it's really been... it's become... Uh, our debauched um, uh, use of it uh, in Australian politics. We use it much more than anywhere else in the world and it should be offering us, uh, it shouldn't be used to limit our choices, it should be used to broaden them. And of course the one thing that we found buried in that uh, Fisher modelling is a, a footnote and a reference where it actually does look at what the costs of inaction um, would be as a result of climate change and it found a $17 trillion hit to the world economy and a $130 billion hit uh, to Australia's economy by the end of the century per year. I think that you're absolutely right on modelling. It's become a political football, whoever releases it, and even your modelling was. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Ben Oquist is the director of the Australia Institute, talking there about the figure that's been dominating at least the Treasury political debate. Lots of other things happening, though. Of course, we will now have... 
the final leaders debate during prime time at the National Press Club on Wednesday. I'm excited. Uh, look, I know I'm going to be part of the coverage. Now I'm even more excited. I've got so many things to say after <laughs> the leaders' debates. They are my favourite thing to watch. I know that's sad, but uh, <laughs> it's true.